What's up guys, welcome back to The Educated Barfly. Today we're doing a cocktail that I'm almost embarrassed that we haven't done. It's called a barfly. And you would think that uh, we should have done that at least early early on, right Marius? Yeah, I, and I just came across it by accident. You no, know, I came across it. You didn't even come across it. I came across it. No? Yep, I did. Okay, when did you come across it? I came across it in the Tony Abu Ghanim book and I was like, oh, this is a drink called a barfly. We have to do that. And that's the recipe. Well, I'm doing an adapted version of Tony Abu Ghanim's adapted version of Harry McElhone's, but it's in that book, Modern Mixologist. Well, I bought a book. I bought a bunch of books at a used bookshop and I was going through them and I randomly opened the page and there's a carta called Barfly. And I sent you a picture of it and it's like, oh, why really? we'd never done this carta before. And you were like, oh, really? And then you, we looked into it and it was like, we put Eric on hold for so long. We have known about wanting to make this for so long. Maybe, maybe you're right. I, Cause that does kind of ring a bell, but I remember- It was last, last year. Right, so then maybe you came across it and, and then we forgot about it. Cause that's very possible. And then I came across it in the Tony Abu Ghanim book. Cause that's, that's where I got the actual recipe from. I didn't get it from like an old school book, but it is a very old school cocktail. All right, let's get into making the drink. Cause we're going dangerously long here. And then, uh, and then uh, we'll talk about the history. We've got a lot to say about this one because it's pretty interesting stuff about it. Yeah. All right, so first thing we're gonna do is grab our simple syrup and we're just gonna do three eighths of an ounce right here, boom. Then we're gonna do three quarters of an ounce of uh, lemon juice. We're gonna do one and a half ounces of pineapple juice. We're gonna do three quarters of an ounce of parfait amour. Parfait amour is actually, you know, People are gonna really bust me for that pronunciation. It's Parfait Amour. Uh, it is, so Parfait Amour is uh, kind of like blue curacao. It's an old school ingredient. It uses curacao as its base, and then it macerates in, I think, bitter almonds, flowers, and vanilla. Um, and, it, and the flowers give it this purple hue. Some people will substitute um, the creme de violette with Parfait Amour for a aviation. Um, it's not seen in very many cocktails these days though. And then we're gonna do an ounce and a half of gin. We're gonna give this a nice, well, we're gonna actually put our nice ice cubes into our glass. All right, then we're gonna, I guess it would be nice to shake with some ice maybe. Add some ice in there, give it a nice shake. And then we are going to give it a little, I don't know if I like that ice, but I'm gonna give it a strain. Ooh, that's an interesting color. It's kind of like gray. Yeah. It's the parfait amour that comes, kind of makes it come out that way. And then we're gonna give it a nice, we're gonna take a channel knife actually. So this, this tool is called a channel knife and it's for basically taking rind, like a little, I guess, snake of rind off of the lemon, because we want to do a little, want to do like a little twirly. I'm going to use the, just like a little swirly twirl of, of lemon on top. A little swirly twirl. People are going to be like, yeah, swirly twirl. In my mind, I had this going like a little Corkscrew. Eh, okay. Let's give it a taste. That is pretty fantastic though, I gotta say. It's nice and frothy from the pineapple. You get that nice pineapple and gin. That's the thing you taste the first and then you taste that parfait amour. You get that nice sort of uh, kind of curacao, kind of twinge. It's a little bit, I don't want to say the, the, I don't want to say medicinal, but it's like a little bit like it has this little kind of hard to place, sort of very dry kind of flavor to it. A little bit like creme de violette. Um, uh, it's nice though, it's nice. It is a great cocktail, absolutely. 
It's from the, like, you know, if you look at the, the I don't know if you guys can see it, like, it's, yeah, it's hold it up to the light, purple. it's very purple. Yeah. I don't know if you can see it in the light. I saw it when they poured it. Yeah, it's kind of a very purple hue to it. And so you mix uh, purple and yellow. But now it yeah. looks green. Green? Well, this? Cocktail, yeah. Eh, it's like a very gray, sort of like a light gray color. Um, you know, I mean, you've got yellow and you've got purple. You mix that together and you're going to have kind of a grayish color. I guess. Or a very light purple. All right, let's get into the cocktail history. I got so involved with the cocktail itself that I forgot to really start talking about the history. And it's kind of a lot of history, so, you know, forgive me. It's going to go a little, I mean, maybe not too long, but it's, it's going to go a little. Uh, so this drink was created by a bartender named Harry McElhone, who owned a bar called uh, Harry's American Bar in Paris. And in 1930, he published a book called Harry's ABC of Mixing Cocktails. And this cocktail made its debut in said book. But in 1924, Harry, along with a friend of his named O.O. Uh, McIntyre, uh, created a secret society called the IBF, right? Which is the International Bar Flies. And this was a fraternity that was dedicated to the uplift and downfall of serious drinkers. That's in their own words. It's a quote. Um, and Marius and I, when we heard about this cocktail and then we heard about the IBF, we got so interested in whether or not the IBF still existed. Because if the IBF didn't exist, we were going to create, we were going to, we wanted to like recreate it. But Marius did a bunch of digging. What happened, Marius? Why don't you take it from here? How, how did you find out about like whether or not this thing exists? First, I contacted Tony Abu Ghanim yeah. and he said he didn't know. So then what do you do? And then I searched the internet, searched, searched, searched. I found a guy on, that posted something on TripAdvisor for the Harry's Bar, said he's a bar fly, he's been a member since the 70s. So right. I tried to message him, but he didn't accept private messages. So that was a dead end. And then I kept searching and searching, messaged the Harry's Bar on Facebook. I sent him an email. Uh, and eventually I tracked down his grandson or great grandson or something. Right. Who lives in Cannes. And I messaged him on Facebook and uh, and he got back and said, yeah, they're still in business. Yeah. It's so, still taking well, memberships. Not, not only is Harry's American Bar still in business, I think they're 108 years old now, but they also still have the IBF. It's still active. So my whole thing is like, I, it would be a shame if we did not create an IBF chapter. There is 130 chapters purported to have been created worldwide. They're called fly traps. And uh, there are some pretty prestigious members of this club, or there have been in the mm -hmm. past, like uh, obviously F. Scott Fitzgerald. And I don't think any of you guys would be too, uh, too su surprised to know that uh, Hemingway was also a member. I kind of feel like Hemingway pops up where anywhere where there's drinking in his time. He's, there's always a story about Hemingway at, at all these different bars. It's pretty crazy. That guy got it around. So I wasn't very surprised, but there's a, like some very prestigious uh, uh, members. And I just feel like we should create a North American fly trap or at least a West Coast fly trap. Mm -hmm. uh, so we should, we're, we're, if, we're, if we don't get the go ahead to do that, to make our own chapter, then I'm definitely, we're definitely making a pilgrimage to Harry's American Bar uh, to have a drink. And we will tell you guys when we do that, because that's going to be an amazing trip. All right, that's all I got to say. This ice is melting. We should probably shoot the thumbnail and all that stuff in this cocktail. So I'm going to end this video right now. If you like our channel, please hit like and subscribe. Check us out on YouTube memberships. Check out our Instagram. We've got a really vibrant Instagram. We've been doing a pretty gosh darn good job with it lately. And I'm pretty impressed with us uh, lately on the Instagram. So you should check us out on Instagram. Follow our socials. Follow our other channel. We have a, another channel called Barfly Free Pour. Uh, we're adding a, a weekly podcast to this thing that we're kind of playing around with. We did our first live stream last week. We're doing live streams every Monday night. So check out Freeport for that. I will admit that the live streams are going to happen kind of late in the night. Kind of like an after dark situation. But um, if you guys are into it, you should. We attracted a little bit of a crowd last time. Not too, too much. But, you know, we're going to be doing them every week. And Marius is going to be a character on the show. So if you don't want to come for me, then come for Marius. And if you don't want to come for him, you should come for Prashana, who's our friend from Talk Tales, the podcast that is also doing this with us. So that's a big mouthful. Check out our merch. See you guys another time. Oh, do our virtual bottle program on theeducatedbarfly.com. And I'll see you guys later.